Welcome back. Today I am finishing my overland build on my Land Rover Defender. In just two days I am leaving for the Destination Defender event in Somerville, Texas. And as you can see I already have some things mounted to the roof and there's a few projects we need to take care of before I can leave as well. Just to bring everyone up to date, this Defender came with a factory winch. However, the recovery point was not visible, so I replaced the original skid plate. I added the LED light bar. In the last video, I added the solar panel to the bonnet. I have these limb risers. And since this is the small two-door 90 model, I don't have a lot of room inside, so I've added a Pelican case to the top that I can store some things in. And because I wanted all that storage space, I did not put a rooftop tent on this Defender. I know a lot of the other people are probably going to have them. But also up here, I have my chairs and my table. My tent is actually smaller, so I just drew that inside. I have added rock rails as well as proper off-road tires. This model came equipped factory with the ladder, which allows me to get up into my Pelican case. And by the way, they make a really nice mount to mount this Pelican case, but I wanted this just to be temporary so that it was low enough that I can pull it into my garage at home. I have also added a Rotopax mount to my roof rack. Right now, this one's just setting on there, but these two are mounted on there. So that is a double Rotopax mount. I will probably change that to a triple so that I can have three up there, but we'll see how far I get tonight. After Destination Defender, a bunch of us are going overlanding for a week, so I will need to carry a lot of water with me, and that's why I have all these Rotopax mounts. For strapping things to the roof, I have gotten these hooks that go into the roof rack from Powerful UK. These eyelets are kind of expensive, but once you get them, you realize how well thought out they are, and they're worth the price. Inside the back door, I have my first aid kit and a couple jackeries. The larger jackery is going to be powering my fridge because the outlets back here do not run when the car is off. So when the outlets are on, they will be recharging the jackery. The jackery itself could probably run the fridge for an entire 24 hours or more. So by running the truck and charging it up, it will always have the fridge powered, which is on and set to 35 degrees currently. Then I have my tent over here. I have my sleeping bag, my pad to put underneath the tent, my pillow, and then some cooking and cleaning things and stuff like that. I'm going to pack all my food and all of my luggage in here later. The smaller jackery I'm going to use to put into my tent or to just use for general things that I might want to power while we're camping. And that brings me to the first project. On this back door, I'm going to put a little camping table that is going to fold down from here and it will just fold up out of the way. It's a good use of space. I can sit there, grab things out of the fridge, just set them here on the table. I think it will be very useful and it is very easy to install. The rear door table that I've decided to go with is the Proud Rhino one and I got this from Lucky 8 Off-Road. There are other units that have more shells but I've chosen this one because I wanted the least profile, the least amount of stuff sticking from my back door. I don't have a lot of clearance for my fridge and the fridge it can't go back any farther because on the 90, there's a bar that goes across. There's actually very little room for putting something as big as a fridge in the back of these 90s. And I didn't need anything sticking off the door and rubbing against the fridge too much. So that's why I've chosen the one that I did. This is going to be pretty simple to install as it does use the factory mounting holes. These bolts are a T30 Torx. I'll be taking all these off and when I put the new panel on, I will be replacing these with longer bolts. The mount is now installed and if you have watched some install videos of these, they come more assembled than they used to. This mount came with these pre-installed and my tray also came with these hinges and these bolts are already in place. Now I can get the tray hung up there. The tray is done and maybe disregard what I had just said because I have twice as many parts as I should. So I don't know if this tray was returned and then they included new hardware. Um, but for some reason I ended up with twice as much hardware as I needed because the stuff was already installed. And then I also got a new hardware kit. 
So, lucky for me, it only took about five minutes to install this. One thing I do like about this tray is these little locks over here. You can pull these out and lock them in the out position. And then just a quarter turn and they pop in and we'll lock the tray up so that it can't fall down. Now the tray is locked. We can see how far it sticks out from the door, probably an inch and a half. I'm glad I didn't get a table that had more shelves to it because I don't think I would want anything thicker than this. And this does not affect any of your original storage. So you still have your cubby boxes here, access to your emergency triangle and other things in here. Neat little setup. The next thing I need to install is this bracket, which is going to bolt onto the back of the ladder and then it has the holes for a Rotopax mount so that I can mount a couple of my either fuel or water jugs right here behind the ladder. In order to install this, I think I have to take the ladder off. That way I can get to the back of it and install this bracket to it. Taking the ladder off just means unbolting it from the rail on the top, as well as the side accessory rail. This plastic trim piece right here actually comes off so that you can mount different things to your Land Rover here on the side. And that is how the bottom of the ladder is held on. On the top of the ladder is a plastic trim piece that I need to remove to get to the mounting bolts. What I'm doing here on the top, I have pulled up my plastic piece on the top. I have heard that it's very easy to break the clips that hold this in, but I pried from this side and was able to get these two clips up which is enough for me to get an Allen wrench in there. It takes a four millimeter Allen wrench. Luckily, once those bolts have been broken loose, they are loose and you can turn them the rest of the way by hand. So you don't have to use the Allen wrench much, but that is how I am removing it, the ladder from the top. I have the top of the ladder loose now. So you can see there. Then it is just held on by these two bolts here and the whole thing will come off. Doing this job is more difficult if you have your roof rack in place. So if you don't have anything sitting on there, it may be easier for you to just remove the rack first and then try removing the ladder. But this job can be done this way and without breaking any of the clips. These lower bolts can be taken out with a 15 millimeter socket. The ladder is now removed. We can see these holes in the belt line where the ladder bolt in. It looks like I need to clean my window where the ladder was before I bolt everything back together. If we lay this bracket over the back of the ladder, we can see how this goes. And there are some holes there that are going to line up with bolts. So I need to take the bolts out and bolt the bracket in place there. I have the bracket mounted to my ladder now. So now I need to mount the Rotopax mount before I bolt this back up to the vehicle. Okay, well, I was tightening the ladder down for the last time and it ended up breaking my window out. I'm not sure why that happened. I was just tightening everything up. So I'm not sure what went wrong. I don't know if it was the buffers or the bend on the PAX mount, but it put too much pressure on my side window and blew it out. And of course, I only have two days before I leave for Destination Defender. I just realized what went wrong. I'm really stupid. I left these spacers out that go behind the bottom here. So it brought the ladder in too far and busted that window out. I shouldn't have set these away so far that I wasn't going to see them when I went to reinstall this. The glass is still crackling. Imagine this whole thing might be on the floor by morning. I think it's time to go home. Not sure what I'm going to do at this point. Okay, I haven't left. I did have an idea. I had a bunch of black vinyl sitting around. So you can see these stripes here. I did put some clear packing tape on the window to keep it breaking from any more. And then I put this black vinyl over it. And I think it looks okay. The other thing is the black vinyl. It is one piece that goes all the way from 
all over the, all the edges of the window, so uh, the vinyl should actually keep this from leaking at all, as long as the vinyl can stay adhered to it. I don't know if the dealer can get me a new window, probably can't get it installed in time. Also, I really doubt that my dealer has one in stock. So I'm going to try to put the ladder on it now, see if it breaks even more. That way I know before I go home tonight what the status of this is. And I also need to still tape it on the inside as well. The ladder's back on, the Rotopax is mounted, and what used to be a window is now just a bunch of broken glass covered in vinyl. Okay, I just finished Gorilla taping the inside of the window. Now none of the glass can fall in here. Should hold everything together. Well, that's going to be it for tonight. This has definitely taken longer than I expected this to take. I made a huge mistake, a big error, and it's really cost me. But if I do make it to Destination Defender and you are there, come by and say hi. And if you're not going to Destination Defender, Stay tuned for more videos. Whether or not I make it or not, I will have a video on that. And if everything goes to plan, I have a big overlanding trip with a bunch of other Land Rovers, and you won't want to miss it. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.